Hey everyone, it's Ivan to Badger.com, here to tell you how to train for the tactical games in one easy step and three helpful tips for the games also. Before we get to the one easy step, we'll start with some tips. Tip number one is know your zero, know your offset. Depending on what your rifle is zeroed at, what is your offset for different distances, meaning where your point of aim is versus where your actual point of impact is. To include, if we start shooting from unconventional positions, whether around things, basically changing the plane that our weapon is on. It's gonna change your groups and depending on your offset, i.e. if I'm running a 50 yard zero, I know that point of aim, point of impact at 50 yards is right there. But as I move forward, I need to actually aim a little bit higher as I get closer. And conversely, if I'm shooting the target, say 25 yards, and I've canted my weapon because of an obstacle, I have to shoot under or around, it's gonna move the group. Not only is it gonna move it down, but it's also gonna move it to the right. So know that, absolutely eight people's lunch. Tip number two, know your sling. Whether you're running something that has some sort of camp buckle you have to defeat or whatever, some sort of adjustable two-point sling, know how to manipulate it and know how to stow your weapon. So beyond just trying to create some sort of like nice tight shooting position, that might be helpful. What is probably gonna definitely be helpful is knowing how to basically stow your weapon, cinch this guy down and have it properly adjusted for whatever gear you're wearing where this stays tied up against you. It doesn't get in your way for, say, if you have to carry something or maybe negotiate an obstacle. Our third, our last tip, know your engine, or as I like to refer to it, strategic sandbagging. Never give it your all. Learned this lesson a long time ago in the Marine Corps. Why? Because you'd be doing some incredibly difficult strenuous activity, pushing, giving it your 110%, and as soon as you finish, Someone tackles you and now you're grappling or they just move the goalpost and now you have like another five mile run right after that. Never give it your all. Always keep a little bit something in the tank. And to that end, know your engine too. So push yourself as much as you can, keeping that reserve. Twofold, one, in case someone does punch you and then you have to deal with that situation or two, more than likely, you have to do a delicate task, like keep these sights steady on target, and then gently pull this trigger to the rear and get good hits. If you're gassed out, it doesn't work. You look at people in CrossFit competitions, like rolling around on the floor when they're done working out, throwing up. That's cool. In that environment, I mean, someone could come over and just stomp you, right? Keep a little bit in the tank. And finally, how to train for the games in one simple step. Do whatever the hell you did for the last year. That's it. Sample size of one, you may very well get second place. Here's the thing. You can treat the tactical games however you would like to treat it. You can treat it like the CrossFit games and just try and be the best at working out. Or for me personally, when I went to it, basically just use it as a metric. Spent a lot of time in the gym, spent a lot of time on the range, and hey, where's that payoff for me? In fairness, I did go to the gym, I think one day, threw on a 15 pound plate carrier, did a rope climb, just to make sure that I could. I was like, all right, check that box, let's go do this thing. I didn't train for it. If you want to train for it, by all means train for it, but Think of it basically as a yardstick to see where your training, just period, is, both with respect to physical fitness as well as with shooting. Or, I don't know, game the game. Whatever you want to do, have fun with it. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.